Please write down some quick facts about this fan care this month. It began in 1968. Today, the month lasts from September the 15th to October the 15th, and there is a reason for that. It first began under President Johnson as one week, and of course that was in 1968. So originally it was Hispanic Heritage Week. Then, 20 years later, in 1988, it was expanded to one month by President Ronald Reagan. It's interesting that this issue crossed party lines, which means it's very important. Johnson was a Democrat and Reagan was a Republican. And they both agreed that this was an important endeavor. So that's great. The month coincides with Independence Day for Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. So yesterday, which was September the 15th, those countries were having parades, fireworks, food, festivities, live music marching bands, schools were out, you know, and all of those things are happening in Mexico today, right now, because today is Mexico's Independence Day. I know what some of you may be thinking, some of you are probably thinking, I thought Cinco de Mayo was Mexico's Independence Day. Touche, it is not. That's the celebration of the victory of the Mexican army over the French army in the state of Puebla. I believe that was 1862, but don't quote me on that. Totally different holiday, totally different reasons. What is celebrated? Around Hispanic, for Hispanic Heritage Month, we celebrate history, culture, and of course contributions of American citizens who have cultural ties to Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. In my personal opinion, the contributions are most important. <clears throat> I'm not saying history and culture are not important. They absolutely are. Yes, history is important. Yes, culture is important. But for someone who doesn't have cultural ties to Spanish-speaking countries, the way to make it more meaningful for those people is through contributions. And when I say contributions, I'm saying like, you know, did you know that one of your favorite songs was actually made by a Hispanic American? Or someone who acted in one of your favorite movies? Or somebody on TV? Or a news anchor? Or, um, you know, someone who invented a certain type of food? Those types of things. Those types of contributions. Scientific contributions. Medical contributions. When we start looking at those things, then Hispanic characters both becomes meaningful for everybody. Here is an example, or here are some examples of contributions. Ellen Ochoa was the first Hispanic woman to go to outer space. She was on a nine day mission aboard the space shuttle Discovery and her heritage country is Mexico. Another important Hispanic contributor is Manuel Blum. His heritage country is Venezuela. He's a computer scientist, and he is most famous for inventing capture codes to tell humans and computers apart. Another important contributor is Franklin Diaz. He was the first Costa Rican man to go to outer space. He's a veteran of seven space shuttle missions. He's also the founder and CEO of the Ad Astra rocket company. He designed the Vasimir space shuttle, which is seen here. I know that's kind of a small picture, but you can check that out. And the list goes on and on with the actors and actresses, singers, songwriters, musicians. I mean, it's just, you know, it goes on and on. So many people. Even people you wouldn't typically think of, like, Bruno Mars, for example, um, one of his parents is from Puerto Rico, so he has Puerto Rican heritage, of course. Okay, 
So why is this important? Why is Hispanic Heritage Month important? It's important because of identity. I'm going to explain this a little bit more. There's a phrase that says, you can take a person out of a country, but you can't take that country out of a person. The fact of the matter is, if you were born and raised in one country, and then you move to another country, you are going to miss your home country. It's a simple fact. If you're born in North Carolina, and you move to South Carolina, there are things you're going to miss about North Carolina. It's just a simple matter of fact. If you move from Monroe to Charlotte, there are things you're going to miss about Monroe. It's a simple matter of fact, guys. So if we deny people the ability to establish their identities, we're denying them a part of what it means to be human and part of what it means to go through experiences to establish their identity. This is especially true for people your own age, and I'll explain this uh, right now. There was a psychological theorist named Eric Erickson. Um, a good while back, he came up with a theory that he calls the eight ages of man. Eight ages of man. He says that a person, if they, you know, assuming that they're born and go all the way until they just die of old age, that you move through eight stages in life, and each stage has a type of goal that you need to achieve or obtain somehow. It's a, it's a goal, and if you don't achieve a goal at a certain stage in your life, you kind of remain a little psychologically stuck in that stage in some ways until it's resolved at some point in your life okay so like for example the first stage is called trust versus mistrust and that is when you're a baby and there's really not a whole lot you can do as a baby to like consciously achieve this goal willfully in your life like you can't but the, the goal is learning to trust your caregivers if you have it basically comes down to food <laughs> um, are you being fed consistently by the same loving people, people who love you? If you are being consistently fed by people who love you when you are a baby, then you have established trust. If for some reason, if you don't have that in your life as a baby, say for example, like in the 1940s in the United Kingdom when they had uh, orphanages, orphanages or just overrun with babies, and they had staff that were coming in at odd hours of the day and night and they're feeding the babies and then the staff quit and they bring on new people and it's just you never know exactly who's going to be holding you as a baby who's going to be feeding you you know there's no consistency there then that's when the baby is kind of psychologically set up to have some trust issues okay and that's, those are extreme circumstances so the, it may not take a lot for a baby to establish trust but Moving on to your age, yours, the stage that you're in in life right now is called identity versus role confusion. And this is where it's very important for young people to figure out who they are, to really get a sense of their own self, and to know what their interests are, who their friends are. It could even be something as simple as what type of music do you like the best? What types of foods do you like the best? Who are the friends you can trust? All right, who are, who are the types of people you don't click well with? Those types of things. And it's normal for it's normal for kids your age for, to be like in middle school, for example, and you're like a hardcore gamer and you're really into video games and then when you're a sophomore, you try out for the basketball team and you're like, why have I never been doing this before? This is like the thing I love most in life. I love playing basketball. And so you have almost like a type of personality switch in which you love video games and now you love sports or vice versa. You could have been doing sports since you were in kindergarten and then you get to middle school and you're like, dude, video games, this is, this is my zone. I love doing this. And then you're in the esports club and in high school and just doing all kinds of different things. That's very normal. So we don't want to deny somebody the 
the space to identify who they are. And that's why Hispanic Heritage Month is important. Nationality is one of the most common ways that people will establish their identity because nationality is, often affects culture, worldview, practices, and beliefs. Not always, but sometimes. Usually the bigger the country, the more so the case. And, uh, and I'm referencing some of the countries in Central America are kind of small, so you don't get a big, like, stark contrast in, in these, uh, the way the nationality will look, influence a culture. You don't get, like, big of a variety. You do have some variety, but not as much. And it's simply because the land that, where those countries are is not that big. That's all I'm saying. Okay, are there any questions, comments? Okay, you guys are gonna have a project about Hispanic Heritage Month in which you're going to research a contributor and design a PowerPoint slide. We're gonna print those off in color and hang those in the hallway. I'll give you more instructions next week. All right, gracias, compas.